So I just been running the machine and I did operate it and um, I gone from low revs into high revs by just pushing the trigger at the high speed setting and the machine cut out. Not the machine, but the engine just stopped. And it did happen twice. So I'm gonna try to repeat again, see if I can replicate the same thing. So I'm gonna measure the voltage on the solenoid wiring because I think it's, it's the problems here. So the white wire is a pull wire. So we should see the voltage on that wire for the short period of time. And uh, that should drop out. And then the hold uh, coil will take over and I'm gonna keep that on. So let me see if I can have a look. If you can see what's happening with the voltage, let's start the engine. So if I push a trigger, I expect them to see some voltage going up and down. That's looking a bit strange. I would expect that to be a bit higher, but at the same time, maybe is a problem with the multimeter not being able to pick it up so fast. Okay, so we should try to measure the hold side. So the red wire is the hold coil, so let's measure on that. So that should have 12 volt constantly when we in the higher revs, okay? Mm, right, you see what's happening? So it again. If I push a trigger, So we do have a 13 volt, 14. Look, so we do have a 14 volts roughly. Okay. And that's coming on for the short time. So that is, uh, I think, what is it here? If you look on the wires as well, look, this wire is a writing right here which says hold. Okay, and uh, just looking by the cable thickness, the, the cable that goes on the red one is the red one connected, and um, it's a heavy current cable. You can see that the gray one is just tiny cable, and uh, so this this red big cable is the pull signal. It's heavy current. This takes maybe 10 or maybe up to 30 amps. I think it can go through the coil pull the solenoid into position. It's a short pulse and it's heavy current, 30 amps or so. And then um, the gray cable here, this tiny cable, will start to feed this whole coil and that takes one amp or less just to keep the solenoid in the position. So someone seems like they swapped the wires over and it was happening now. I think they just went possibly by colors, the red, red, and then gray and white. So what's happening now, when you push a trigger to go high revs, you're getting the short pulse into a hold coil, but the gray cable is trying to feed 12 volts constantly on this white cable and uh, is overloading the output from the PLC because the gray cable is a direct output from the PLC. And uh, I think what's happening is overloading the output and that's maybe why the machine is cutting out 
with the, when we go in the high refs. Okay, so I'm gonna try to swap them back over as it should be, and we're gonna do the voltage test again. That would explain why we had only three volts on this, because it's a massive load on this tiny wire, and I think the PLC output is possibly rated up to two amps or something. So let's try to swap them over and then uh, test the voltages again. Okay, I swapped the wires over, so I have this big red wire, the thick wire, going into the white one from the solenoid. The white cable goes with the red one, the heavy heavy current cable, and there's the gray one, the great tiny one, goes into the red one, hold coil. Okay, so the theory is that the whole coil needs less current, so we need the, we can use the smaller diameter cables. So, and now that my multimeter is connected on the hole, so let's hope the voltage is gonna stay there. So we have 11.7 11 volts. So we have 11.7 volts in comparison to what we had previously it was only three volts. And the three volts was just because the coil is very heavy on, on the current. Okay, so let's do the same test with the pull side. Okay, so I've got my multimeter in here and um, that's on a pull, pull coil and this red heavy cable, so we're expecting to see the short pulse on it. And, um, start the engine. Okay, engine's running. Going a high rep. It says different now. We have a 12 volt, 12 volts coming. So we have a 12 volts coming to solenoid, so that's good now. So that's the way it should be. So someone was possibly trying to work and fix the problem, but somehow I think they managed to swap the swap the solenoids, um, the, the wires to the solenoids. Okay, so it's marking us on the wire, which coil is hold and one is the pull side, okay. Both of them has the marks on it. It's not easy to see possibly over the camera, but um, you can, it's actually on the wire so you can see it. And always the pull side is gonna be heavy current feed. So the cable that is feeding the pull side has to be the bigger cable. Okay, and just out of curiosity, I uh, will try to see what's the current consumption by these coils, okay. So we can do, have a, some comparison. So I'm gonna set this to my, the current. I'm gonna go on the, let's go on the pull side first. So this is gonna be my pull side. So when I'm going to activate the solar high refs, we should see the current for the short time. Same as the voltage. We had a voltage coming for like a few seconds. So we're gonna have the same with the current spiking up and uh, we can see how high the current is. Yeah, so it's taking, look, 33 amps. Um, let's see if you can see that, yeah. So 33 amps for the pull coil. So it's very heavy current. It is very heavy current for the short time. So, and what, what, what was happening previously when the wires were swapped over, the PLC 
um, it was trying to feed the, the coil, which is consuming 33 amps. That's why the voltage was going to go right down and the PLC possibly shutting down because that's where the output is going into that coil. So this tiny wire was trying to feed the 33 amps into the coil and the PLC reacting to it because it does have some protection on the outputs. So let's see the current on this uh, red wire. Okay, that's a hold wire. And um, I'm just gonna restart my Minimax values here. And start from zero. Okay. Okay, so 1.4 amps is, so 1.4 amps is a holding current, and um, that's what it should be. Just another thing, just try to pull the wire out and look, the crimp has come off. So it's perfect time to replace it. Just one thing I want to show you here is um, I'm gonna go into resistance mode on my multimeter, okay? And uh, if you're not too sure which coil is which, so you can always check resistance. Um, and if you go on a white cable, look, we have the short circuit, okay? Zero ohms. So there is a resistance, but it's very tiny. And if you go on a hold coil, you have like um, 15, 16 ohms, okay? So that is 15.2 ohms. So you can test which coil is which. So it's two coils. One is about 15, 16 ohms. And the next one is, is, is very close to one ohm. If you don't have a markings on the cables, like the hold coil is gonna be about 15 ohms. The pull coil is gonna be around one ohm, just under that. Okay. So let me replace the crimp here and I will test the machine again. And hopefully that's gonna be it. So I'm glad I did a bit more testing and managed to get the fault triggered and then um, so we have some extra faults in it so at the, at the moment it was a joystick so that's new drive joystick engine revs a bit low so just uh, engine revs right here and uh, the wire mi wires mixed up on a solenoid uh, causing the PLC to shut down so we'll try again and uh, we go from there so new cream fitted on testing machine for quite a while now and um, all working good no more problems at all 